when it comes to, to dating, um, women have the, the handle of the knife and That's men true. have the, the blade. So if, if So is there any other advice that you are willing to share with the singles out there? Myself included. <laughs> out there go out make yourself available i'm not mm -hmm. saying to be a prostitute use <laughs> <laughs> another word fling yourself to every anybody but be 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 open be be mm -hmm. a little more sociable socialize mm -hmm. with people that is my own and that's how you're gonna find people that's how you're going to be able to say that is what I definitely don't want or what I and you don't have to be in terms of it doesn't have to be in terms of a relationship. Form friendships with 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 males and just just socialize. Well what uh, do you think about the puss in the bag mentality that some of these guys have? That they're saying that um before they actually would consider to marry a woman, they would need to know what they have under, you know, under, the, under, in between. So what do you say on that? Like the, the whole sex before marriage, do you think on that? What do you want? What are your goals? What are your objects? My mommy said, make your leap. And yeah. this is what you would want. And if somebody mm -hmm. comes to something that you are not pleased with, Next. Mm -hmm. Well, my thoughts on that, I think when it comes to, to dating, um, women have the, the, the handle of the knife and That's men true. have the, the blade. So a guy might say, you know, he want, he want, he want. But if he's really into you and he's really, he will, he, yeah, he will, he will work it out. I mean, you guys will, will compromise and you'll get around it. But it's women, women have all the power when it comes to relationships. Especially the start of a relationship when a man is a hundred percent into you, you have the knife, right? Yeah, if, if, that's you, if the puss in the bag argument come up, that that's whether or not you want want it. And most women, they're so infatuated, they're and they're so afraid that the man will go that they just give it up, and that's yeah, not their that's, desire. I mean, if that's your, uh -huh. if that's your desire, fine. But if uh -huh. it's not, then don't. Don't. If the guy is really into you, then, then let him work for it. Okay. So stick to your core values, stick to your list. And or you can compromise on things, try to compromise. Nobody is perfect. Mm -hmm. You can live without it, you can't live without it. It's entirely up to you. But the main thing that I would say is not have any regrets. If you think you're going to regret something, don't do it. And that's just what it boils down because you will have to live with your regrets. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but um, just as you were saying that you stick to, it's a risk, you know, of saying that you're hoping that the person will grow because sometimes they don't. You give the past and say, well, um, let's compromise with this trait because of all the 10 um, lists that you have, he checks nine out of the 10. So you say, all right, let me compromise with this. But what if later down, in the um the relationship then that one that one thing start becoming so overwhelming so you start saying you know what i should have waited until i get the 10 out of 10. what do you say about that <laughs> not even 10 out of 10. even that one i'm, I'm sure we can list about five things off our head that that you find mm -hmm. that annoys right? disturbing <laughs> Because you said I can be very annoyed, and, and that's true. I, I I I love to play, and she's not necessarily a playful type. So I mean, mm -hmm. you'll not you'll never get you'll never you get never get a ten, 10 out of ten. You, it, it, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. If I get six out of ten, thank God. Praise God. Right, but you have to learn. You have to whatever it is. If if this guy has to has to be funny, if he has to love kids, if if he if if he has to be a Christian, if he if you have to wait before sex, have your core things, about five core things that you say that these things need to align. And the rest, I'll compromise on. And as long as those things, I mean, if they are core things, if, if, they, are, if they are foundational um, characteristics, they don't 
foundational characteristics don't change that easily over time with people unless there's some something traumatic. So if you have poor characteristics that you base your choices on, then chances are it won't change that easily. And what will change is whether or not the person, I don't know, the features change, character, minor characteristics change. The guy that you thought was so funny <laughs> after a couple of years, I like. Why did I but think you were funny? <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. And going back, going back to what you had said about um, loop speed, I always, I always said that to myself. You know, don't just pick up a guy because he look good like the outward appearance is like 10 out of 10 because after a time as we age as we all age looks fade so it would be best for you to do the relationship based on traits and attributes rather than just the appearance the outward appearance because for like, example right. nowadays appearance yeah, is, we love to say that it's not important but it, it is important it, mm -hmm. it, it very much important it's just that it can't be the main thing it, mm -hmm. it, it there, there's no way that you're saying that all right i want a guy that 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 that's an like eight out of ten at least and you're gonna set it for a two it's not gonna work you have to mm -hmm. be physically attracted to the person as well and that's that's not something that i think um we should take lightly just because we don't want to seem superficial we need to hold and and oftentimes we do because our attraction is what pulls us to people. So it it, mm -hmm. it there's where you should settle way below what you want. I mean, if he's a, if you want an eight and he's a seven, fine, right? But mm -hmm. if 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 when you look at him, you're like, no, 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 don't do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you cannot, yeah. don't do it. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. do it. And guys say, hey, hey, hey. there. Physical attraction is is important. It is not the main thing, but it is it is second or third, honestly. In society, how they view appearance, they put it as precedent, like the highest regard. So so much so that nowadays young girls are considering to do adjustments to their body to to fit a you know a status quo um, in society. Um, getting BBLs, getting tummy tuck, getting breast enhancement. Um, well, some of them would say it's for their own improvement, but ultimately sometimes I'm thinking, if is it that they're doing it just to attract a certain set of guys or they're doing it because of previous failed relationship and they, they, they might have had self-esteem um, issues from that last relationship. So they, they, they feel the need to make adjustments to their bodies. What do you think about that, about the whole drastic change in body appearance, Moya, to um, basically catch a dude? <laughs> well, that is everything that um, females do to enhance is really for attraction. The lipstick right. that you the makeup that you do, the hair, the fact that we change our hair, nails, the fact that we're well put together, everything is for attraction. So I'm not surprised when they would say, oh, I'm doing it for me, but they never do it for themselves. They are doing it to, I guess that's their way of just covering it up. Just to find the reason. Like, right. They're doing it to, to ensure that they can attract a, um, a specific type of guy yeah i think uh, well when i think saying that you're doing it for yourself is the truest meaning in it because ultimately humans are selfish i disagree yes honey ultimately humans are selfish we are primarily driven by our own self desires and how we view ourselves is a reflection of that if if a woman wants to enhance her body it, it's really for herself right I mean, yeah, she wants to attract someone, right? Yeah. That may be out of her league originally. But if yeah. you look at the deep meaning, it is a selfish desire, which, which is inherently human because all of us are selfish in that regard. I mean, it's two folded. It's two folded. It really okay. is. And I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that. 
It's just that yeah. the guys that are that are being caught, I mean, you have to be honest. Um, I mean, some of these things, some of these jobs are really convincing and that they're not necessarily upfront to say that, you know what, I changed this and I changed that. And I mean, at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is passing on our genetic code. So if yeah. if, if, if so it can be selfish, then it, it is selfish. It is selfish. It's, it's a deception. It's, 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 you're trying to deceive the other person to take your genetic material. And at the end <laughs> of the day, what is happening? You're going right back. It's going right back to the fact that okay, I'm trying to attract a specific. Person. Yeah, right. so if, if you yeah. attract a specific person, right? You attract somebody that's higher than your caliber, right? Yeah. And naturally, you are seven. And when you put on your makeup and you're here, you're a 10. And you attract a guy that's a 10. You feel good about that. So the that's mere, a selfish. Yes. The mere fact that you feel good about it, it reflects back on you. You feel good. It's selfish. Mm-hmm. We'll do anything to put ourselves in, well, in a leading position to get that particular okay. partner to reproduce. So you, I understand what Michael is saying. Let the listeners comment on what they think, whether or not it's still. All right, guys. So let's get to the juicy, spicy section of this discussion. So the first question is, how do you guys um, quell arguments in the relationship? How to settle it? How to settle it? One of the things that I've learned throughout the six years is sit and talk about it. There are some times that you're going to come to a common ground. Other times, it's not going to happen. But at the end of the day, forgive. That's it. Forgive. I mean, there's something. Trust me, I've learned the art of that. Just let go see. As in literally at the end of everything, laugh, make up, and forgive. But you still have to come to some some sort of, you know, come on girl at the mm-hmm. end of everything. Just to ensure that that issue, both of us can work on it. And the next time it probably pop up, we know that, okay, we spoke about this and what we should do or should not do. But Forgiveness is a must. We are not perfect, neither myself or my uh, or my car. We're not perfect, but we are trying to stop it. That's the point of marriage to ensure that basically two persons coming together trying to make things work. That's it. Mm-hmm. I, I I I think the the most important thing is honesty. I mean, regard regardless of what you're feeling or how much. I mean, if if first of all, if you're upset, walk away. If you're if you're heated, walk away. Come back to it later. But be honest with what you're feeling. Be honest with what you're thinking. And more than often, the fact that you are honest with what you're thinking, what you're feeling, and you bring it to the other person, if if they mean the best for you, I mean, if they've calmed down and they can think logically. If they mean the best for you, it oftentimes it works out. I mean, arguments happen. It will happen. It happens on a daily basis. We are more than five more five times a day already. <laughs> I mean, more different things. But just don't go to bed. Don't go no. to bed angry. Basically. You know about that. I've been to bed angry many times. Many. You know the old time saying, "Don't go to bed on a don't let the sun set," and you don't. You and it's not the issue. that you go to bed angry, but I mean, it has happened to me many times. And for the times where I've said, all right, I'm going to ensure that this issue is squashed. I will work it out before bed. It has worked out so much better than the times when I decide that I'm going to sleep with this issue. Come and not even want him to touch me. <laughs> I don't want you to me up. <laughs> no. <laughs> So me not even sleep properly. You get what I say? But it is recommended, highly recommended. And then people that didn't know what they must say, don't go to bed angry. It's true. I, I, I agree with, with that statement. Um as I was saying, the, the, the best thing is honest to be honest. 
I mean, as as soon as come pick you off, be honest about it, right? Just say, say, hey, honey, what you're doing um is really upsetting. And and how you say it matters as well, because if you're if you're being condescending, if you're being a jerk about it, it is it's not gonna be recepted, received by the per by the other person. So you have to be honest and be tactful in what you're saying and how you're saying it. Just doing those two things, it 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 quells a lot of arguments, a future arguments, and it, it just make life life more easy easier to live. I mean, my my mother is if I try to not not let anything stress me out or anything bother me. So if 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 Moya wants something, I mean, sure, if winning the argument means I I get what I want, I go win. Right, I'm not gonna stress up myself. <laughs> but what I kind of for me though, as it pertains to arguments, me personally, I have to stop. I let him talk, and then I step out of it. Literally, step out of everything and relax. Me half relax, and then from there, so I'll come back to him when he's in a state of probably happiness and say, you know, today this is what happened. And I didn't like this, or I think you could have managed it this way. And I found that it has worked a lot better. There are times when I when I actually step out of the situation, I step back, and I quiet myself and try to think about it and stuff. Michael is the one that comes to me and says, what's wrong? So he actually senses that there's something wrong. And then I can, he's in that state to receive what I'm saying then. So I can oh. actually say something to him then. So I think I think you have to just know who your partner is, who you are, and how you can work around it. Mm-hmm. And know when to give space and give them time to, you know, resolve everything in their mind first before mm-hmm. they could approach the situation. That sounds good. And then mm-hmm. on another note, how do... Huh? Most importantly, forgive every day. Every day I have to forgive myself. And every day I have to forgive my husband. And it be, it's becoming a habit now and so much easier. So much easier. Oftentimes, just apologize. You know you're wrong. Apologize. It fixes a lot. Everything. And it, whether or not that per, the other person wants to take it, you apologize. And you have let it go. And it's now in their hands. They can be. And not. Accept your apology, but that's them prolonging the the situation and the yeah. argument. If 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 I mean, after a while, you, you get to learn each other. You, I mean, if, if you're being hundred percent honest, and and this is the hard part with with most most couples, they find it difficult to be honest. And I think that's the biggest problem people have in relationship, especially marriage, because them being honest means means that they will be vulnerable. To the other person that's true you will be but that is why you marry this person because they can manage your vulnerabilities all right they're supposed to be able to manage it they're supposed to know your weaknesses they're supposed to know your strengths they're supposed to know when they need you need their support so in 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 you being honest to say that you know my moya i i did this or i said this today and I'm really sorry about it. I mean, there will be repercussions. There will be um, lashbacks. But it, it, that's a part of the consequences of your actions. And you must be man or woman enough to take it. Take it and to be honest. And most times, when you're honest, it fixes everything. It fixes everything. Like, sometimes you lie about things that, that, that in the long run, it, it just causes more problem and more anguish and build um, mistrust in the relationship. And the, the worst thing in a relationship is to wonder whether or not you can trust this person because once you want once you start thinking that that's the that's the beginning of the end mm-hmm. okay sounds really great welcome to the end of this discussion with michael and moya if you guys have any other topics that you would want us to discuss please comment it in the section below and don't forget to like share and subscribe. See you guys in the next video. Bye.